In this video, I'm going to talk about conditional formatting in a chart using a cool little mouse over technique. The problem I have with charts is that it's sometimes really difficult to know exactly what you're looking at. I've got an example here of a, of a line chart, and it's really difficult to know this line here. Is that Bob? Is that Vera? I've made this chart more difficult by having all the lines of a similar colour, but even if they were different colours, it's still difficult without sort of peering at the legend and going backwards and forwards to try to work out which one is which. So as an alternative to this, I've got a chart here and it's hopefully it's easy to see which line Bob is. Bob is the red line and it really stands out. And what's nice about this chart is I can hover my mouse just over Bert and as soon as I do that, it highlights that row. I'm not clicking anywhere, I'm just literally moving my mouse across over the different names and it highlights their particular line on the chart. It also highlights their row in the table and I can use the table to do the same thing. So if I'm highlighting, like I say, I'm not clicking anywhere, I'm just literally hovering my mouse over the top and it highlights each of the individual lines. I've got another example here. I've got some countries and uh, a bubble chart that indicates uh, how much beer they drank and how many Olympic medals they won. And it's now it's nice and easy to see which bubble is which. Sometimes bubble charts it can be really difficult to tell which bubble am I looking at. This is a nice easy way of doing it. Same technique. So how is it done? Coming back to my original data, I've just basically got some names down the side, some dates across the top, and then some sales values uh, in between. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put um, some conditional formatting. And what I want to do is conditionally format based on a particular name. So I'm going to hold that name in a particular cell. I'm going to keep the name in L2 and just temporarily I'm just going to use data validation to make it easier to change that name. So you don't need data validation for this technique. It's just going to make life a little bit easier in the short term. So now I've got a name that I can just choose from this list. Okay. Now I'm going to make this cell here equal to whatever we have over here in L2. So whatever I change here, obviously it's going to change over there. And now we use a VLOOKUP here to work out what Dave's sales figures are in January. So equals VLOOKUP, because I'll use this one here. The lookup table is this table here. And then the second column along, and I want an exact match. Now if I just change this very slightly, I can make, make this be look up, look up all of these values. Here I'll be looking at the third column, fourth column, fifth column, etc, etc. So, so if I change that to, to a formula, columns, and then the expanding range, $A1 to B1. At the moment that's going to give me the answer 2, but if I autofill across it's going to give me three, four, five, etc, etc. The other thing I need to do then is to fix down the B part of the first reference, enter that in, and then if I autofill across, it gives me all of Dave's sales. So this row is exactly the same as this row. But if I change the drop down to Fred, it gives me all Fred's figures. Now the reason this is useful is because then this row here is going to be the one which we format slightly differently. I'm going to take my chart, make a normal line chart to begin with. And I need to switch the column and row around so we get the dates across the bottom. Delete the legend because we're going to make our own legend. I'm also going to delete the title. Make it a little bit shorter. And leave it. Now, what's interesting here is we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight lines of information, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven lines. And that's because one of them is the same bit of information. The Fred information, which is this one, I think. Yeah, Fred information is repeated. So this line is just there twice in exactly the same place. If I click onto it, it'll tell you in the table itself up here which one you've currently selected so in this case it's the uh, the bottom one which is the one that I want to reformat and that means if I format this one here and make it a different color I 
and also make it a bit thicker. It means it really stands out. And if I change this value here, this changes, therefore this line changes. So you can see now how the conditional formatting works. So how do I get this value here to change? Just by moving my mouse over the different labels. First thing to realize is that those labels aren't really labels, they're actually cells. So I'm gonna put the names of the people in my chart down here. I think it's easier to for have the, the, the names appear in, uh, in the same order as they appear at the end of the chart. So in other words, in, uh, in the order of, the, of their June sales. So in order to do this, I'm gonna use a rank formula. And the rank formula says, what's the ranking of this number within this range? It says that one is in, it says that Bill's 14 number is the third highest, Mary's is the highest at 16, and Bob's is the lowest with 7. I can then use index and match to bring all of those names in their correct order into these cells down here. Now I want to do these in sort of every alternate row just to give me a little bit of space on my legend. So I can use a few different formulas to bring these names here. First of all, count A equals count A. And I want to look at the cells directly above wherever I am. In this case, L11, so L11. But I'll anchor down the first part of the L11 reference so that it's going to expand. That gives me zero, but if I auto fill down every alternate one, it gives me the numbers one to six, which is nearly what I want. If I add one to that, and auto fill down, I get the numbers one to seven. This is what I actually want. So I can use index and match now on these numbers in order to be able to bring these names in this order. I'm going to do it like so. First one, index in this range here, and the row number I want is a match for this number that I've just worked out with the count A in this array, and I do want an exact match. Close off the match, close off the index, and that gives me the first one is Mary. Auto fill that down, and there's all my names. You don't have to do that bit, but I just think it looks nice to get those na uh, names in the correct order. This doesn't help me at all with the mouse over. So where does the mouse over come in? The mouse over is made up of two parts. First of all, there's a user-defined function which is going to change this value here. Now, user-defined functions are something that you use, uh, you create VBA code for. Um, it's going to be a very simple bit of code, but it probably won't make sense until you see the second half of this technique. But let's first of all go and put in the VBA code. Developer, Visual Basic, and this is where we're going to put in this code. So I'm going to create a function. The way you do that is you write a function. I'm going to make it a public function, so write public function. Call this function whatever you like. And what I'm going to do here is declare that I'm going to put a, uh, I'm going to give this function a range. I'm actually going to give it a cell, but we call that a range. And I need to give that range a name. So let's call it cell. So what, what's going to happen here is I'm creating a function called mouse over. And I'm going to give uh, mouse over a range, and I'm going to call that range cell. Then, what the function is actually going to do 
is it's going to change cell L2, this is that cell that has got the name in it, which I can write in square brackets like so, equal to the value of the cell. So cell dot value. And that's pretty much it. So basically what's going to happen is I'm going to give this function a range. It's going to look at the value of that range and put whatever value we've got into L2. So how do I give this particular function a range? The way I'm going to do this is by using the hyperlink function. Now the hyperlink function does lots of things. In this case, we're not really using it to do any hyperlinking. But one of the amazing things about hyperlink is it triggers whatever it's supposed to do as soon as you go over it with the mouse. This is pretty much unique in all functions. So, hyperlink. And what I'm going to do is use the mouse over function, which I just created earlier. And remember, I need to pass mouse over a range or a cell. And the cell I'm going to give it is the cell right next to wherever I am. Okay. And then close off the hyperlink. And then enter that in. This is all I'm actually going to do at this stage. Now, this, not surprisingly, gives us an error message. But this is the amazing thing here. If I then move over this cell, it, cre it still fires off the macro. The macro then changes this cell here to whatever value is in this cell, and therefore the chart changes accordingly. Pretty cool, huh? So, the only problem with this hyperlink at the moment is it looks ugly. It works, but it just looks incredibly ugly. So in order to just change the fact that it looks really ugly, I'm just going to put an if error wrap around there. That just says if it's an error, then give me whatever's in that cell. That looks better. I can hyperlink that down. And I can change the formatting rate so it doesn't look any different to a normal cell. Oh yeah, there's something else I'm going to do here. So now, you can see how this is working. One other thing I'm going to do here, you see if I just sort of go to the side of these cells when I'm not actually over the word, it doesn't quite work. So I'm going to just change these here and make them wrap text and now wherever I am over in the cell over the words or at the side it still works. Okay great. Now I just need to tidy this up a bit. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put some colors in here to represent the different colors of the lines. Some formatting there. Then I'm going to use just standard conditional formatting to make sure that this cell changes color if we choose that name. So standard conditional formatting is so formula is is when this cell here but I want to make that relative is equal to this cell here that one's absolute I want to format that and make it go red Okay, okay. You can see that one working now. I can use the same hyperlink formula up here. So this works there as well. Use some more conditional formatting. Same as before. And C3, which is always in C, is equal to L2, then format this as red. Okay. And then just do some tidying up. So I'm going to hide this column, 
hide this column. And I take all of this stuff and make it white background, white font. All of this stuff, make it white font. Make the chart itself, pull it across, move the plot area back, get the chart background, no fill, and finally hide the grid lines. So there you have it, a nice mouse over to highlight chart. So this technique, uh, in conjunction with the click to select and double click to drill down technique that I showed you in the last video, are the three ways that I use most often to really make my dashboards interactive. So um, I hope you found this helpful. Thanks very much for watching. See you again.